Hey there, it's Nick. And it's Leah. Real quick thing before we get going. Please subscribe to our show and follow it. In whatever platform you're listening to us on. Yes, whatever app you're using right now, there's probably a plus button or a little bell or it says subscribe. Well, tap that, please. Just a quick little... And it makes such a big difference for us. We would really appreciate it. We really would. So please do that. And thank you. Thank you. And now let's start the show. Yay. Do you allow your champagne bottles to pop? Do you cancel plans without rescheduling? Do you make the elderly stand on the subway? Were you raised by wolves? Let's find out. Here are things I can make. everybody. Welcome to the show. I'm Nick Layton coming to you from New York. And by my side today is Leah Bonema. Hello. Leah may or may not have actually been raised by wolves in a small town in Maine. And completely delighted by it as well, <laughs> which I know upsets Nick. I'm proud of it. Um, so <laughs> let's just get right down to it with our amuse-bouche today. Which I think we should discuss what an amuse-bouche is for all of those out there. Okay. Unlike ourselves. No, of course, surely we you don't know. know. what a, a happy mouth. <laughs> yes. Literally happy mouth. Uh, it's like uh, at a fancy restaurant, a little taste from the chef before the meal begins, like a toast point or a canal or a little consomme. Chips and dip. Chips and dip. <laughs> yes. Uh, yeah. Guac and chips. That's a technically an amuse-bouche. Of course. Yeah. So for today's amuse-bouche, I want to talk about opening champagne. Sounds good. For you, what is the key thing when you open champagne? Do you know? I feel like what I think the key thing is, isn't going to be the key thing, but I'm just going <laughs> to own it. I've worked at a lot of weddings. Okay. I feel like the key is getting it open. Okay. That, <laughs> oh, we agree. Yes. Key is getting that champagne out to people for the toast. Okay. Speed. Speed. I want to pop it. But okay. You already said, do you pop your champagne? So I was like, oh no, I thought that was the fun part. Yeah. No, don't pop it. Because you always kind of, I, I thumb it boop, 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 up to the top and then I... Oh God! No, uh, no. Okay. Am I just supposed to break the top off on a <laughs> on a table? <laughs> okay, shh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let me let me just explain. Oh, okay. <laughs> so popping is incorrect. Oh, no. Yeah, no. Okay, so here's how it works. Obviously, you want to start with a chilled bottle of champagne. So chilling is very key. And you want to have your glasses ready. And it's nice to have a towel nearby. This is optional, though. If you do it right, you will not need the towel. So the first thing you do on a champagne bottle, there's the foil. Remove the foil. And then under the foil, there's like this little cage, which you're familiar with. And it's called a mousselet. Oh. So that's a little, little vocab for today. So a mousselet is that wire cage that's over the champagne bottle, and it takes exactly six twists to get it off. Oh, wow. This is some standardized thing (sighs) because there's probably only one manufacturer of machinery that puts these things on. So it's always six twists and you want to loosen it, but you do not want to remove the cage. You leave the cage on. Oh, I've been living a lie. So you leave the cage on because once you remove the, the loose in the cage, you've armed the bottle of champagne. It's like taking the safety off of a gun. Oh, wow. And uh, some German scientist did some study where he determined that a bottle of champagne, the cork can come out at 25 miles an hour. Oh, wow. Or that's 40 kilometers an hour for our international <laughs> listeners. <laughs> and actually, if the bottle of champagne is hot, if you didn't chill it, apparently the speed of a cork can be like 60 miles an hour. Really? Yeah. So you can poke out an eye. Wow. So you've armed the bottle of champagne. And once you've loosened the mousselet, you're going to keep your thumb on the top of the bottle. So you're going to keep sort of the cork in and you're going to grip the cage tightly. And then you're going to twist the bottle, not the cork. That's key. Oh, wow. Yeah. And now some people use a towel around the mousselet, the cage, to get a little more grip. That's optional. Do it or not. Your call. But twist the bottle. That's mandatory. And then as you're twisting slowly, you will sort of feel the pressure build against the cork. And I like to kind of try and hold the cork back to prevent it from opening too fast. And then you keep doing that. And eventually you'll hear like a little hiss. Oh, We're going to do ASMR for this. (laughs) So you're going to feel a hiss. And that's what you want. You want it to make as little sound as possible. If it pops, you've done it wrong. Because if it pops, that means you've let all this gas escape. That's when you can get, you know, champagne pouring out and you're wasting it. But once it hisses open, then the cork will just come out and you toss the cork and the cage aside and then voila. Oh, my goodness. We have learned so much. Yeah. I mean, I, I never would have guessed. I don't even think I've ever seen champagne open that way. That's the proper way. So you, I don't know where you're getting your champagne. But... I mean, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, that is the proper way to do it. So if it pops, it's wrong. <laughs> 
So now it's time for a question of etiquette. Let's go deep. Deep, deep, deep. Let's just do it. So I want to talk about canceling plans because this happens. Oh, a lot. Canceling happens. And canceling is not always a bad thing. I mean, I think you get to a certain age, and I think I'm of that age, where if you have like dinner plans with somebody and they cancel on you, you're actually thrilled. You're like, oh, thank God. I could just go home tonight and just get into my PJs. Yes. There, and I, I don't know what age that is, but you know you're officially an adult when you're like thrilled about plans being canceled. Yeah, you're like, oh, I'm just going to go home and watch Netflix. But there's a right way and a wrong way to cancel plans on people. And I really dislike when people cancel the wrong way. And I think this is a public service. Okay, I'm I'm, I think, I'm excited and also anxious because I'm like, I'm about to hear the way that I've always canceled plans. Well, I think the general rule is if you cancel on someone, it is on you to reschedule. Yes. I th- and that's as simple as that. Because if you do not reschedule with me, I am under the strong impression that you are not actually interested. Yes. And that's about dating. That's about a job interview. That's about friends. That's in any aspect of human interaction. I think if you cancel on someone and do not make an effort to reschedule, like, well, that signal is clear. Yeah, but I mean, that, that might be the signal that might be their way of letting you know in which case i i can take that hint but i mean i guess the thing is that realize that that's what you're doing yes if that's if that's what you want to do then do that and then fine i can go my own way yeah i'll I'll accept that life is hard (laughs) (laughs) yes we're not meant for everybody yep i didn't need that job no i don't need that friendship no i can swipe left yes but if you didn't intend to do that and you don't reschedule immediately after canceling well then that's on you. Yeah, it is on you. Yeah. So that I think is just the rule that people should know that this is the societally agreed upon signal about interest. Yeah. And also give people enough time. For sure. Yeah. I mean, I think the earliest you know that you need to cancel, you have to communicate that. I also, one thing that really bothers me is that if you know that you have to cancel, but you're, I've noticed a lot of people will be like, hey, and then it's this whole thing where I'm like, are you trying to see if I would why don't you just tell me what it is that you need to do otherwise or that you have to cancel instead of me now having to play a guessing game with what this message means. So if somebody wants to cancel on you, but wants you to cancel first? No, they want to cancel, but they don't, they feel bad about it. Am I going to be upset? Have I been like, you know what I mean? I, this happens a lot with people in my friend circle where I'm like, just cancel. I'm not going to have a thing about it, but I don't have the time to f- pull this out of you. I do not understand what you're talking about. You don't have friends like this? I Who are being vague about canceling well, plans because they feel guilty because they know that this space has been held or like whatever. So then they want to give you like this long, I don't need to go down the yellow brick road and like learn your whole life. You know what I mean? If you have to, can- just let me know you can't do it. No biggie. Oh, so the elaborate explanation. Yeah. And then also like, would it be too much if you, I was thinking, I don't, we're adults here. <laughs> just tell me you can't, it's not a problem. <laughs> if I have a problem, I'll be like, Hey, we've had this forever and I don't have in, so I'm not going to, you know what I mean? But like, I don't need, if I have to figure out your text mm. and then put that time into it and then be like, what do you, what do you mean? Yeah. And being just clear and just upfront. Yes. This own is your nice. cancellation. Yeah. So you feel like your friends go out of their way to create an elaborate backstory and a conversation around the canceling yeah. when they should just pull the bandaid off. I, I don't want to have to have a conversation about it. That's okay. what I don't want to have to have. That's fair. Yeah. I don't want to have to go through all your feelings on it. Now I have to put work into you canceling? That's that's, <laughs> that's too much. Yeah, that is too much. It's too much. Yeah. And I think if you cancel very close to the time you were supposed to do the thing, this is noted. Yeah, that is, is, that's an apology thing. But yeah. it happens. It does happen. And I think if you're hospitalized, you're on a subway underground, and like you couldn't emerge, I get that. But... It's never the crime, it's the cover-up. Exactly. So it's sort of like, how do you handle this? And so I think you have to communicate at the earliest opportunity. Definitely. And just take responsibility for it. Yes, this is nice. Yes. And I also think that if you cancel, then you cannot now show up for the thing. So if you told a friend- that happened? Yes. Yes, this happens. You're like, oh, I can't make it to your party tomorrow night. Oh, so sorry. Showing up is not an option now. No, no. Like you that's, canceled. Yeah. I don't, that's never happened. It happens. That would be wild. I'd be like, is this your ghost showing up? <laughs> wild things happen. No. Yes. What do they say when they show up? I oh, I could make it. Oh, I'm here. Everyone's everybody happy. I was able to make it. No. People are rude. I don't like that. Yeah. You could say, hey, I have a thing where I'm not sure I'm going to be able to make it. Is it okay with you if we leave it open ended? Or is this a thing where you have to know the amount of people? And if so, I'll just cancel now. That's a polite way to handle something. Sure. Yeah. Give the host the option. Yeah. So they know you're in a place where you're not 100% like a work thing is running late or whatever. Right. That's fair. 
Yes. So I think point being, canceling happens. Yeah. And you should be an adult about it. Yeah. But then also, if you're a person who takes things personally because something came up and that person had a legitimate excuse and they told you about it, that's on you. You can't take things personally when life happens. That is also true. Yeah. Yeah. But that's just general etiquette. Also, if you're a person who's used the train as an excuse every time of something, after a while, people are like, we're on to you. Yeah. Because we've all been on the train and we know it happens, but that's why we leave an extra couple of minutes. All right. You heard it here first. Don't lie to Leah about being on the train. <laughs> and now it's time for Intermezzo. Intermezzo. So this episode is brought to you by HelloFresh. And with HelloFresh, you get farm fresh, pre-proportioned ingredients and seasonal recipes delivered right to your doorstep. And by the way, HelloFresh now owns every plate. So we love both. So you can skip the trips to the grocery store and count on HelloFresh to make home cooking easy, fun, and affordable. That's why HelloFresh is America's number one meal kit. What I love about HelloFresh is that they have multiple meal plan choices. I love meal plan choices. I went with Fit and Wholesome because I'm wholesome. So our boxes are arriving soon and we're going to report back. We're going to let you know how it went. Uh, We're very excited. And for you out there, go to HelloFresh.com slash RBW free and use code RBW free for free breakfast for life. One breakfast item per box while subscription is active. That's free breakfast for life at HelloFresh.com slash RBW free with code RBW free. And now it's time for Intermezzo. Intermezzo. So did you know you can help support our show on Patreon? We have a Patreon. We do. And like there's tons of fun stuff there. There's videos, there's audio clips, all sorts of stuff. I was just thinking about how many videos there must be up there by now. Oh, there's a lot. Oh, there's a lot of bonus content that you have never seen if you do not join us on Patreon. So go to our website, select monthly membership and see if that's something you'd like to do. We'd so appreciate it. We really would. So please check it out. And thank you. Thank you. So now it's the part of the show where we take questions submitted to us from the wilderness. So our first question is, can you double dip if you're dining alone? I mean, I find this obscenely, I don't even know who asked. Of course. This is a real question. I know, but I'm like, of course you can. Give yourself permission. Set yourself free. (laughs) That's a, that's true. I do agree with you. But you will agree that there are some etiquette rules that still apply. When you're alone? Dining in a... Well, you're still in a restaurant. Yeah, but it's your food. Well, you can't lick the plate. Well, you could if you wanted. You're no. paying for it. Absolutely. No, that, that that's... <laughs> but no, now you're just being difficult. <laughs> I, please tell me we agree that you're not allowed to lick your plate if you're dining alone in a restaurant. I'm not going to say you're not allowed. I'm going to say it would be weird. It would not be appropriate. How about if you ran your finger down it? And licked your finger. No. Because it was so good. It's a compliment to the chef. Okay, I'm re- just, we're moving along. I refuse <laughs> to engage in this conversation. Everybody outside uh, that is not here right now, no. No is the answer. But you are allowed to double dip. I agree that you are allowed to double dip chips because that's like a hygiene thing that has to do with dining with other people. Yeah. But you're still in public and people can see you. But it's your dip. There's nobody you're sharing it with. Yeah. No, we're on the same page about the dip. Okay. I'm not, not going to argue with you about okay, the dip. I'm really passionate. I didn't it's mean to about, get so about the up licking about of the plate where I think our paths diverge. <laughs> well, I wouldn't lick it. But you would not be upset if someone licked their plate. I would giggle. Okay. I'd be like, that person is okay. wild. Okay. Our next question. I see you being like, I'm never eating in public with Leah. Yeah, no, that's definitely been established. (laughs) Oh, here's a good question that came in on our voicemail. So let's play that now. Hey, Nick and Leah. My name is Eben, and I have a question about subway etiquette. So sometimes when I have a seat on the subway, I am approached by an older looking person. And the internal debate I have in my head is, do I offer the seat to this person because they're older? Or am I going to insult the person by offering them the seat because it implies that I think they're old? So where is that line? Thanks. Bye. Okay, so let's talk this one out because I don't know if there's an (laughs) obvious answer to this. What's your first impression? Hey, I love this voicemail. And I feel like this person is very considerate and aware of their surroundings and thinking about people's feelings. Well, yes and no, because this person really doesn't want to give up their seat. Oh, I didn't read that at all. I read that they don't Cause want if you the just, people to feel old. Uh, I, I got a tinge of, I would really rather not give up my seat unless I have to. I've had someone give up their seat for me and it set me off for the rest of the day. 
In a good way or bad? A bad way. Because they thought you were what? I was like, do you think I'm pregnant? Do you think I'm incapable of standing? Ah. Do you think I'm old enough that I can't stand on my legs? I just, I didn't take it well. Okay. And they very well could have just been like, we give our seats to lady. You know what I mean? Nobody looks at me and thinks lady. That's (laughs) That's why I was like, oh no, I called people. I was like, it's over. Oh, after you got off, you <laughs> got like, off the subway and you're like, do you know what happened to me know, today? Do you their seat? Do, do I look pregnant? You know what I mean? So I don't want people to feel like, oh, I see you and I think you look feeble. So chivalry is dead, people. No, I still get up. But what I do is I fake like I had to get up. Okay. You're like, oh, this is my stop or I've been standing. All or like, oh, I just want to stretch my, stretch my back a little bit. <laughs> and then I just get up as if I was getting up anyway. But if you just get up and don't signal to the person that this is for you, then anybody else could just like slide well, in Well, then there. that's on them. You want uh, an old person to be like a ninja? I mean, if this person is that old where they can't sit down quickly, then I will get up. But there's a lot of people in this gray area. Well, this is our caller's question. Yeah. Is what is the window of age where they look old, but maybe not old enough because they could be offended? Also, some old people seem very physically fit. You know what I mean? And some people just look weary and you're like, you're probably 30. You know what I mean? (laughs) So it has to be old and slightly infirm. Old and it looks like they're uncomfortable standing. Okay. So we have to see some visible discomfort. You need to look tired. Not because I don't want to give up my seat. I'm happy to give it up, but I don't want you to feel insulted. Like I looked at you and I thought you looked tired. Okay. So you just have to use your judgment on that. It's a judgment call. Or just do a fake act out where, oh, I love standing up right now. And then what about, well, I think if you think someone's pregnant. Man, if I don't see a baby coming out, I'm not. You have to be crowning (laughs) in order to get (laughs) your seat. Otherwise, sometimes people just hold weight in different places. Yeah, I think you can never assume someone is pregnant. I've been with women when people have asked them how, when they're. When they're due. Yeah. Just perfect strangers. Yep. Yeah, that's a whole other topic. It happens. It happens a lot. That's even not even a topic. We can just settle right now. No. Never. No. Nope. There is never a time to ever ask a stranger about a pregnancy. Ever. Or even somebody who's not a stranger, if they didn't bring it up to you, you ignore it. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Sidebar. (laughs) Never talk about it. So, and then for our caller, I guess one question is, does it matter what city it is? Because I think in New York City, an old person that wants your seat, they'll just come up and tell you. Oh, they'll be like, may I sit down? Whereas I guess other places are more polite. And so they'll just wait for you to offer. I mean, in other places, you'll know who it is. Oh, hey, that's Betty from at the block. Okay. I just know that she had her knees done. There's only towns of five people (laughs) and New York City. There is nothing in the middle. There is nothing in between. So for you out there, if you have a question for us, and yes, you do, send them to us through our website, where you're raised by wolves.com, or you can leave us a voicemail, or you can text us at 267-CALL-RBW. So what have we learned today, Leah? (laughs) We've learned... I learned a lot about champagne. Yes, that you've been doing it wrong your entire life. I've been doing it wrong my whole life and I've worked in the service industry. And I think it'd be so helpful if someone, when you take a job, teaches people. Yes, yes. Knowledge is power. The appropriate way to do things. That's what the show is about. Yeah. Yes. So helpful. I learned that you feel no shame about sticking your finger across a plate and sticking your mouth. Yeah, I don't feel bad. I definitely don't feel bad about that. The licking of the plate, I maybe said just because I knew that that would mortify you. But I definitely have pulled a finger and then... I mean, what if it was delicious? Yeah, what if, Leah? And then you wanted to savor the last bit. Okay, And your hands were clean, and it's your mouth. (laughs) I have no rebuttal for this. (laughs) Yes. So that's our show for today, Leah. Well, thank you for having me. I know you're (laughs) thinking uh, thinking this may be a bad idea. I'm going to cancel our dinner plans, (laughs) for sure. Unless it's a chef who wants to know how much love they're they're getting. I'm pretty sure that the chef is not aware of your table manners. Mm. The chef was like, did you see that girl out there? Like the plate. That's how good I am. Thank you, Leah. Thank you. (laughs) That's our show for today. And thank you out there for listening. If I had your address, I'd send you a hand address thank you note on my custom engraved social stationery. Please subscribe to our show on iTunes and leave us a review. Follow us on the social medias and visit our website, wereyourraisedbywolves.com. And now hopefully nobody will ask, were you raised by wolves? See you next time. Oh, Leah, one more thing. What? Have you signed up for Patreon yet? I have. Me too. You out there, have you signed up for Patreon yet? No? Well, go to our website, wereyourraisedbywolves.com, click on monthly membership, check it out, because we would really appreciate it if you'd support our show. We love your support. We would. So please do that, and we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.